income here of uh, Nusa Capital. And I'm making this very short video concerning the crypto stories that you may have missed during the week. And so let me just quickly kick off with this one, this tweet from the President of the United States, Mr. Donald Trump. I'm sure that by now you've all heard about it, and it is pretty obvious that he's not a fan of Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency. But perhaps what caught my eye was this part down here, when he says he was talking about Facebook and other companies want to become a bank, they must seek a new banking charter and become subject to all banking regulations, just like any other bank. And he says, both national and international, we only have one real currency in the United States and it's stronger than ever, both dependable and reliable. It is by far the most dominant currency anywhere in the world and it always stay that way. It is called the United States dollar. And um, there were quite a few responses uh, to the president and how some of the crypto, crypto ratty, you know, actually trying to challenge him. But anyway, perhaps that's not really the main point here. But the point here was a slew of articles that came after it, as far as I'm concerned. And one of the most, uh, one of the strongest ones was from uh, Steve Venetian, I think it was the Treasury Secretary, who talked about Bitcoin being a threat to national security. And then he followed it up with this. Manishin says, uh, Treasury will ensure Bitcoin doesn't become Swiss numbered bank accounts. Well, I don't know whether anybody has told him, but um, um, he should certainly know that every Bitcoin address is on the blockchain and everybody can see what goes in and what goes out of it. So I don't think money laundering through the blockchain is going to be a sensible idea for any of the criminals. But um, you keep hearing these uh, politicians, most politicians, and including the American politicians, showing how little they really know about this whole um, uh, cryptocurrency stuff. But anyway, it's quite interesting. I think you should just have a look at it and see what he's saying because, uh, I mean, you can just see how little he really knows when he says certain Swiss banks historically offered clients additional secrecy through anonymized numbered accounts known only to the client and select bankers. Well, everybody's going to know your Bitcoin address, but um, I suppose he hasn't been told, he hasn't got the memo yet, as, <laughs> as some people would say. Anyway, moving swiftly along, another story that caught my eye this morning was this. A, crypto, a cryptocurrency exchange will be launched new stable coin in partnership with Paxos Custody. And Huobi, in case you don't know, is a cryptocurrency exchange based in Singapore. And the new stable currency will be given the HUSD. And uh, it says here, a Singapore-based cryptocurrency exchange where we will launch a new US back, dollar-backed stable coin in partnership with Baxos and Stable Universal. The new coin will be based on the RC20 standard and have a ticker symbol of HUSD. It says here, this is what I think caught my eye, it says it is worth noting that the HUSD already supports four US regulated stable coins. The PAX of standard, which is the PAX, true USD, that's TUSD, USD coin, USDC, and Gemini dollar, the GUSD. And it serves as an all-in-one stable coin wrapper. I, I've got to say that I... This is new and I need to do a lot more reading, but for those of you who already know something about it, I think you should be enlightening more people out there about this and what this could actually mean. Now, because of this, because of this whole stablecoin business, I suppose um, it's going to come into discussion because of the volatility within the cryptocurrency you know, industry. You know, the, the, the price actions of most of these coins are extremely volatile, you know, any small thing, you know, you could get something as trivial as, um, let's say, Vitaly Buterin suddenly changing the color of his underwear and suddenly the price of Bitcoin changes, <laughs> as my wife would say. But anyway, um, because of that, I got this article here, which says new cryptocurrencies promise stability through ties to the dollar. But is it a myth? It says the unpredictable nature of cryptocurrencies has prompted developers to turn to pegged alternatives. Unfortunately, the current, the count, the, I beg your pardon, the coins they tout are just as volatile. Now, this was taken. I remember this article from November 30th, 2018. Now, I have the uh, physical copy as uh, I subscribe to the New Economy, 
And so when I saw it this morning, I quickly went to look for it and I found the article on the web. And I would suggest that um, you also go through this. This is another one that I think you should read that will give you a brief, very brief and very quick understanding of stable coins and what they're all about. And the several uh, different types of uh, stable coins are also discussed in um, in this piece so I will leave you to uh, to read um, that moving quickly from that um, one thing that I should talk about next uh, I think it's this one no sorry it's not that I've covered all of these oh and this is the one since we're in Africa um, a big pardon here is Zimbabwe's foreign currency ban spurs demand for the cryptocurrency. Now, in many of you have heard about Zimbabwe as the modern example of um, how a, cur a currency can collapse. You've seen the pictures, you've seen the videos, you've seen the documentary, so we don't need to go through that. But uh, just recently, um, the government banned the use of the United States dollar in Zimbabwe, and so people are turning to uh, cryptocurrencies because they're also trying to get the Zim dollar um, returned. Now I've spoken to a few Zimbabweans out there who've told me that the decision is just ridiculous and nobody trusts the new Zim dollar. I thought that the government could have been a little bit more sensible by bringing it in uh, gradually and then gradually phasing out the United States dollar but they know what they're doing. They're there, I'm not there they know what they're doing and I'm, I'm going to assume that they know what they're doing and I know they have their reasons for doing it but we leave it at that but anyway this is another story that I think you should read that you might find interesting let's see oh and finally again another Facebook thing uh, why blockchain's biggest threat may be Facebook now I've not really seen any reason why Facebook should be a, a threat, but some people feel so, such as the one of the co-founders of Ethereum, a guy called Mihai um, Alisi, or something like that, that's the name here. I beg your pardon if I'm butchering the name, please forgive me. And he uh, gives reasons as to why um, this is a danger to blockchain. I don't see, I don't see it personally, but for those of you who know a lot more about blockchain, I think you might find this an interesting read. Anyway, um, to wrap up, I would just say that um, all these stories are in our Flipboard magazine, which is called Blockchainology. For those of you followers of ours on either Twitter or a follower of mine, Ulusha Goyekami, as Oluyikami at, um, at Oluyikami on Twitter, you will find that there are many regular um, releases of uh, updates of the magazine and we keep informing you. I hope you've enjoyed this simple video. Please smash the subscribe button. We most appreciate it. And um, and by the way, for those of you who are trading out there, trading you know in, in, in cryptocurrencies, I say you know keep your eyes and ears open and your trading sharp. Thank you for watching and listening. Bye.